The strange case of the Red Circle started in New York and ended in the Antipodes. But first, I should explain how two men with the initial G came to be in London. Gennaro was the hero, Black Giorgiano the villain, and both men loved Amelia. Yes, what can I... You have a room to let? Ah, well, you see, I don't... Who is it, Albert? The wife, she usually sees to this, you see. A uh, visitor, my dear, uh, wanting a, a room. <laughs> All right, Albert, you go into your boat. <laughs> now, sir, what do you require? <laughs> is the room for the night? Or for a longer stay? <laughs> Well, Mrs. Warren, I cannot think you have any particular reason for uneasiness. And you note I have other things to engage me. Holmes, the, the matter of a lodger remaining unseen in his room for more than a week is surely of some passing interest. If I were a lodger, she wouldn't see me for weeks on end. That doesn't trouble you, does it, Mrs. Hudson? Nothing troubles me where you're concerned, Mr. Holmes, but... If you remember, you arranged an affair for a lodger of Mrs. Warren's a year ago. Yes, you did, sir. An Italian gentleman, a Mr. Fermani. Enrico Fermani. Mr. Fermani never stopped talking of your kindness, sir. How you brought light into the darkness. It was a Wagner night, I think. Let us hear about this lodger. It frightens me, Mr. Holmes. I, I can't sleep for fright, hearing his footsteps moving here and moving there from early morning to late at night, and yet never, never to catch so much as a glimpse of him. Mr. Warren is as nervous as I am. What's the fellow hiding from, Mr. Holmes? What's he done? You see, except for the maid, she's all alone in the house. Oh, no, uh, I can't stand it. Oh, my no. nerves can stand it. What's in the coat? Smelling salts, this is absolutely for them. Take time to consider, Mrs. Warren. Yes. The smallest point. Maybe the most essential. He came ten days ago and he asked me my terms. Do I told him 12 shillings a week. There's a small sitting room and a bedroom all complete, all at the top of the house. And he said he'd pay me three pounds a week for it. Three pounds? Yes, sir, three pounds a week, as long as I kept his terms. What terms? But he wanted a key to the house. Well, that's all right, most of my lodgers have them. But he was to be left entirely to himself and never on any account to be disturbed. There's nothing very wonderful about that. Oh, well, not in reason, but this is out of all reason. He's been there ten days, morning, noon and night, and neither she nor Mr Warren nor the maid has once set eyes on him. And apart from the first night, he's never once gone out. Oh, well, he didn't go out on the first night? Oh, yes, he did. He returned very late. I'd gone to bed. But Mr. Warren saw him. It was after midnight he'd come back. These meals, I mean, surely he eats. Well, he rings when he wants them. We put them on a chair outside his door. If he wants anything else, he writes it on a bit of paper, uh, like this. Just in pencil. Just the one word, nothing more. Here. The maid leaves the Daily Chronicle with him every morning at breakfast. Why is it printed? Oh, I can see his handwriting. What's the deuce? Me? <laughs> well, 
The uh, pencil is broad tipped and violet tinted. And it's used with, uh, well, it's used with considerable pressure. And the paper's been torn off at the side before the printing was done. You can see the, the S of soap is partly, partly gone. Suggesting? Haste. Or caution. The man's age and appearance. Oh, he's under 30, sir. He's very dark, middle height, clean shaven. Oh, has an accent like Mr. Fermani. Of course, no name. No, sir. The letters or callers? Oh, no, none, sir. His luggage. Labels? Stickers? White Star? Ten days ago. New York. I uh, think that uh, we must wait until we have a little more material. Please vanish, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Oh. Leave it to me, Mrs. Hudson. You must admit, Holmes, there are some points of interest. Only that the man now in the rooms may not be the one who engaged them. Yes, of course, I hadn't thought of that. And he went out immediately after taking the rooms and returned at midnight. But why a substitution? Well, it opens up a pleasurable field for intelligent speculation. And there is one line of investigation. Mrs. Warren's former lodger. Enrico Vermani of Naples. He works backstage with the Royal Opera House. I um, helped him find a close relative once. A simple matter. 37 Catchpole Street. Mm. You've added something. A friend to his fellow countrymen in need. Do you suppose he could have recommended his former lodgings to a fellow countryman in need? Possibly. Hmm. Well, it doesn't explain the lodger's behaviour. Behaviour? What behaviour? How do you know this address? Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes? He always keeps a record of his past clients. But if Holmes has something to ask, why does he not come himself? Why send you, Dr. Watson? Well, I... I do, on occasion, act for myself. Well, I cannot help you, I'm afraid. I know nothing of this lodger of Mrs. Warren. Is he perhaps a fellow countryman of yours, recently arrived from America in need of help? Then tell him I'm here if he needs me. That is all I can say. Excuse me. I must go to work now. It may be that Mrs. Warren needs help. The man is disturbing her household. Why? What does he do to them? Well, it's more a case of what he doesn't do. He doesn't appear from dawn till dusk. He has his meals on a tray left outside the door. If he's a fugitive from justice, we should turn him over to the police. Police? No. No. Come on. If there is a problem, Holmes knows where to find me. At the theatre, not here, never here, Doctor. You understand? You have enemies in your line of work. Everyone has enemies, whatever they do. Is that not true of life? But some are more at risk than others with their beliefs and their courage. I do what I do, Doctor. Don't make me out to be a saint. Now, please, excuse me. Signor Zamba, a senior partner in the firm of Castellotti and Zamba, chief fruit importers of New York, was stabbed repeatedly on the steps of his mansion. Now, this is dated uh, eight weeks ago. 
Detective Rimmer of the Pinkerton Agency hey, Rimmer. said at the scene of the slaying, we believe this is the work of a Neapolitan society allied to the old carbonari known as the Red Circle. Famous throughout Europe, a branch has now been planted in Brooklyn. Detectives are anxious to question a Giuseppe Giorgiano. Now, Fermani was hiding something else. I can't describe the feeling, but there was, a, there was an old woman who I took to be his mother. His mother? You went to his home? Yes. A face full of sorrow and secrets. Is this the person that you helped, Holmes? If you're holding something back, I, I should like you to tell me. By going to his home, you may have put Hermione's life in danger. What? He's a point of refuge for the Italian community in London. A beacon of light, if you will, a dark web of devilry. The Red Circle. And this Giorgiano. Black Giorgiano. He has earned the name of death. La Morte. In southern Italy and far beyond. He's red. Up to the elbows in murder. Is it possible that this black Giorgiano is the man at Mrs. Warren? No, but there may be some connection. Watson, we have work to do. Out of the opera house. And then Jane Cross to send a telegram to my friend in River. Nobody's allowed in here. Oh, it's you, Mr. Holmes. Sure. Mr. Holmes? Hawkins, what brings you here? Same thing that brings you, I expect. Well, you got onto it so fast, I can't imagine. Different threads leading up to the same tangle. We've come to see Enrico Fermani. But Fermani's dead. He found with his throat cut less than two hours ago, up here. Murderer got clean away, I'm afraid. What's the... You're right, Holmes. I should not have gone this morning. Might have saved a life. I don't think you can blame yourself for that. Golden boys and girls all must. As chimney sweepers come to dust. A person arrives alone in London. He seeks help from Fermani, his fellow countryman, who places him for safety in Mrs. Waddle's lodgings. And Fermani is murdered rather than give away the hiding place. No, no. No, of that we can't be sure. But who killed him? Giorgiano? Is Giorgiano in England? What does he want with this lodger? The person in that room is entirely alone and at risk. I mean, even a letter might be intercepted. How does a message reach him from the outside? Except 
by that most valuable hunting ground ever given to the student of the unusual. The agony call. We need only concern ourselves with the Daily Chronicle for the past two weeks, which our lodger collects every morning after his breakfast. Oh, oh, dear me! What a chorus of cries and groans. What a rag bag of singular happenings. Oh. Lady with a feather boy, a prince's skating club. Holmes, listen to this. Be patient, we'll find some means of communication. Meanwhile, this column, G. Can you pick up the trace again? Ah, here we are. Here. Uh, I'm making successful arrangements. Patience and prudence. The clouds will pass G. No, nothing. Here, here. The path is clearing. If I find chance to signal message, remember code as agreed. That's two days ago. Mrs. Hudson! What is it, Mr. Holmes? I'm washing curtains. The Daily Chronicle yesterday and today, if you'll be so kind. <sighs> Patience and prudence. Now oh, the affair begins to grow more intelligible. And black door, first floor, window right, after dusk, G. A.R.? G. Black Giorgiano. Could it be a trap to draw the person out? It's unlikely. Well, should we not tell the police what we know about the Red Circle? Tell the police! They find it difficult not to deal with the facts without confusing them with our suppositions. Oh, listen to this. Motiveless murder, according to Inspector Hawkins. Doctor, you must come quickly. There's been a kidnapping. What? This is a police matter, Mr. Holmes. I'm throwing that lodger out. I'd have gone straight up and told him so if that But me. she thought it only right to ask your opinion first, Mr. Holmes. A large pot of tea, please, Mrs. Hudson. I'm at the end of my patience when it comes to knocking my old man about. Who knocked him about? Oh, I wish I knew that. It happened this morning, sir. Mr. Warren, he's a timekeeper at Norton and Waylights and Tottenham Court Road. Oh. He has to leave the house before seven in the morning. It would greatly help me if I could speak to him myself. All right. Take care, Holmes, his heart. Can you speak, Mr. Warren? Well, I hadn't gone ten paces. <coughs> before two men crept up behind me. They threw a coat over his head, bundled him into a cab, and drove off and shot him out on Hampstead Heath. Hampstead Heath? Dreadful. What did you observe? I took the bus home. Before the bus? These men, did you observe their appearance? No, sir. I was picked up as if by magic and dropped as if by magic. Three of them, at least, was in on it. Maybe four. Did you hear them talk? One of them swore some oaths in Italian. Money is not everything. I'll have him out of here before the day is done. I should like to meet this lodger of yours. What time does he take his lunch? One o'clock sharp. Is there anywhere where we might conceal ourselves? 
Yes, there's a box room upstairs. Is it a looking glass? Yes. There's one on a chest of drawers outside on the landing. Excellent. Come, Watson. What about me, then? You've got 40 minutes. they would have done if they'd got him bears no thinking. But they didn't. Do you see what I see? A house with a porch and black door. With a room to let, to which G could have access. Holmes, I feel very strongly that we should inform Scotland Yard. Not yet. We are on watch. And may be being watched. Let us see what lies behind these lodgings. Gave me some money and I haven't seen him since. A foreign gentleman, you say? Definitely. And I don't care for foreigners. Oh, really? So, if you want it, gentlemen, I'm sure we can come to an arrangement. Get in a horse, sir, when you finish. Thank you. How are you here? Perfect. Look, Watson. The first floor window of the lodgings, our agitated lady. Only a few more hours to wait before the signal. After dusk, G. Mm. It has all the makings of some love escapade. Love? Love may be at the root of it, but her face, or well, what's in her face, she fears for her life. I consider a couple seek refuge in London from some instant and terrible fear. The man desires her utmost safety and arranges to communicate in such original fashion that not even the landlady knows of the substitution. And those printed messages to prevent the fact that she's a woman being revealed by her handwriting. Look, a candle and matches. Whew, whew. Let's see. 
But there's no need for this now, surely. Can't we just simply bring them together? And guarantee that we'll protect them forever from the Red Circle? No. We must let them play this thing out. I must return briefly to Baker Street. Do you have reason enough to stay in the lodgings? Mr. Warren's health gives me every excuse. It might be advisable for me to bring back your revolver. No need, old man. I have it. Good. Splendid. I'll see you within the hour. Journey's end with lovers' meeting. I'll do you this justice, Mr. Holmes. I was never in a case yet I didn't feel stronger for having you on my side. Fugitives may be Gennaro and Amelia Luca. If so, in grave danger. Expect agent imminently. Regards Abe Rimmer. The agent's here. He arrived from New York this morning. His name's Leverton. Leverton, I know of him. The man he's after is Black Giorgiano, leader of the Red Circle. Do we score over you for once, Mr. Holmes? You must give us best some of the time. I think that we should pool our resources. Senora Luca. Senora Luca, it's Sherlock Holmes. I must speak to you. Oh, no. No. Your husband. Gennaro will be safe and so will you, if you will place yourself in our hands. Scotland Yard is watching the house. And Mr. Leverton is on his way from New York. Mr. Leverton? We shall not let any harm come to you. Please let me in. Please. I'm not going up there again. Never. Oh, don't be silly, dear. Don't be silly. You know what the doctor said. It was just a cat. Scratches. No, it it's wasn't. Old. It lifted. No. Mrs. Hudson, would you make Vera a cup of tea, please? What is going on in this house? Noises. Lights going off. This'll be the death of me. Oh, my God. I was born in Posillipo, near Naples. My father was chief lawyer. Gennaro had no money and no position, nothing. But his beauty, his strength and energy. My father forbade much and we ran away. We were married in Bari. I sold my jewels to bring us to America. Fortune smiled at first. Gennaro saved a rich Italian from some ruffians in the Bowery. He was Signor Castalotte, of Castalotte and Zamba, the fruit importers. Gennaro became like a son to him. Tell me about this visitor. This friend of your husband's from Posilipo. Oh, he's no friend. Gennaro brought him home one day. They had met in the street. He came again and again. Where is 
He talked and raved about politics and social questions and what he meant to do, whirling his great arm. His voice was like thunder in our little house. And your husband? He sat pale and listless. At first I thought it was dislike, but then I understood it was a deep, secret fear. I implored him out of love for me by all we held dear to tell me why this man overshadowed him. In his wild young days, when all the words seemed against him, he had joined a brotherhood, Il Cerchio Rosso, the Red Circle. He thought its purpose was to put right the injustice of life. <laughs> Once you've taken its dreadful oath. Tell me about you and Giorgiano. I had noticed for some time when he came to us. His eyes were always turned upon me. This terrible, glaring eyes. And one evening, I had awakened what he called love in him. Emilia, mio solo. But it was the love of a brute, a savage. A few days later, there was a Red Circle meeting. Signor Castellotte had been approached for money and refused them. Now they planned to kill him. They drew lots. It was fixed. It was Giorgiano's revenge for my rejecting him. Gennaro, più caro amico. My dearest friend, in all the world. And then you both went to the police? I went alone. That was brave. Yes, but what has it done? They got us away, but friends still die. We shall never be rid of that beast, never. <laughs> and now you must go. I've said too much and broken my promise to my husband. Go, please. Go. Il vostro coro verso una nuova vita. Tu sei la tua. Enrico would have wished it. Go save it to a new life. Grazie. He can't stay here all night. Well, if he has to, won't you, Doctor? Oh. Well, 
In that case, I wouldn't mind a game of whist. Do you play whist, Doctor? Mr. Holmes? Emilia. Emilia. Mi amore. Son venuto. Apprenditi. I've set my men on watch, Mr. Holmes. What are you expecting to happen? Well, there are times when the art of detection is of little use. We must wait upon the unpredictable. I've had some experience of that in my time. I can say only that we are expecting Senora Luca's husband. You must let him pass. You, your men must not distract him. They know that. Well, and our murderer? Oh, he's a wild. Somewhere. <sighs> Waiting his chance. We have a good description from the American, Leverton. We'll be ready. Look. Senor Luca, you must give me the signal. Go away. I don't trust you. I trust no one but my husband. I'm obliged to you, Doctor. The main thing is just to keep it as still as possible. Fine. Mr. Holmes. Holmes? This is Mr. Leverton of the Pinkerton Agency. Leverton? Of the Long Island Cave Mystery? I'm honored to meet you. The honor is mine, sir. Well, well, well. well. I'm sorry we had to meet like this. You're a brave man. I saw you on the roof. <laughs> when you're on the trail of a lifetime, Mr. Holmes, you put all thoughts of personal safety out of your mind. The brute got away, I suppose. Yes, but he'll be back soon. There's something in this house that he wants badly. Oh, yes, I know. Thank you, Doctor. I'm fine, just fine. Is the lady upstairs safe? Yes, but trusting no one. I'm still in this wait for her husband's signal. What signal, Mr. Holmes? Leverton the Lamb. So Gennaro Luca is over there now. Not yet, but he will be, I hope. I couldn't find Luca when I got to London. Well, my contact was Enrico Fermani, but the brute reached him first. And he must have made him talk before killing him. Um, should we not go upstairs to reassure Mrs. Luca? She won't admit us once. She'll only answer to her husband. Oh, look. Hawkins. <laughs> Not too conspicuous. Yes, uh, Inspector Hawkins, he seems an able fellow. Well, the Scotland Yard's finest. He knows his business. Gentlemen. Gennaro Luca has just gone in. So far, so good. Mrs. Luca came to us the night the Red Circle planned to kill Castellotti. They'd already murdered his partner, Zamba. We managed to round up most of the gang, but Black Giorgiano slipped the net. 
When we heard he'd left for England, I followed after him fast as I could. I got in touch with Scotland Yard, but he'd gone to ground. again mm. three lights measured slow what's he saying what does it mean nothing nothing but his next actions must confirm it he must come here to collect her It's gone. A message received. But what message? Gennaro, my dearest friend in all the world, and betrayer of the Brotherhood. There's no message. There's somebody with him. Watson! Did you hear that, Holmes? Yeah. Danger. My God, look! She's out there on the street! Wait, Watson! Take those tickets, sir. Please. Our ship sails at dawn. What are you going to do with him, Inspector? He'll be arrested and tried for the murder of Georgiano. That is the law. Well, I don't know what your British law may be, but I guess that in New York, this lady's husband will receive a pretty general vote of thanks. There's not a judge on earth that would condemn this man. I don't think Mr. and Mrs. Luca have too much to fear. But we have to go through the procedures. Take them downstairs. No doubt if you'd been here on your own, Mr. Holmes, you'd have found a different solution. The law is what we live with, Inspector. Justice. 
It's sometimes harder to achieve. What I still don't understand is how you came to be mixed up in all this in the first place. Good night, Inspector. Good night, Mr. Holmes. English justice looked kindly on the young couple, and soon afterwards they left for Australia. There they found a new and happier life, free from the threat of the Red Circle.